Welcome, Umoja 2 TV. We're here tonight with a special guest, uh, Coach Steve Smith. Um, Coach Smith has been with the Albany School District for 31 years, uh, teaching physical education. He also um, was a football coach there, and he also um, ran a fabulous Saturday morning basketball program at Arbor Hill Elementary School. So a lot of people in the area really know Coach Smith. Um, Coach Smith also officiated, uh, been officiated since 1990. He has officiated states, regionals, and federation uh, championship games, and also uh, coached the division or officiated Division One and Division Three in JUCO levels. Um, highlight of coach's career um, so far <laughs> will be a double A semifinal semi game at the Tom Junior Center, where um, Gillen, 2014, where Gillen beat uh, Columbia 102 to 100. Coach, that'd be a, a fabulous game. That's a high scoring game for high school. That was that was just beyond whatever we thought. You go to a game like that, and you want both teams to show up, and hopefully everything goes according to plan. And both coaches were happy as well as. The three officials, we couldn't have asked for a better game. Now, what, what, what do you remember about that game that was pivotal, that, you know, that, that really stood out to you? Uh, the fact that each team had a chance to win the game every overtime. It seemed like this is it, but it was poor foul shooting. And probably the uh, highlight, at least for me, the game was over, and I went up in the stands to watch the second game. And I was texting my friend, and he wanted to know what the score was, which I didn't know. <laughs> and I turned to the guy behind me and I said, excuse me, could you tell me what the final score was? And the guy goes, oh, yeah. And let me tell you something. They missed a lot of free throws. <laughs> you wouldn't believe it. And his buddy next to him hit his arm and said, you dope. That guy officiated the game, <laughs> which is the best compliment you can give to official. Yeah, yeah, Didn't yeah. even know you were there. Wow, so that wow. was uh, Absolutely. made my night. Yeah. Now, let me talk. Let me backtrack a little bit. Um, you've been teaching in the school district for so many years. Um, mm -hmm. You affected so many you know, children's lives. Um, one, one of them or me, because <laughs> you coach in, in football um, at the high school level. Um, can you talk about you know, your, 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 your position there as a phys ed teacher and as a coach, how, you know, how that... I tell everybody I had the best job you could ask for. Uh, teaching children every day was different, just like officiating. And just to have all the enthusiasm that came into the different gymnasiums I was able to um, teach for. And I had great teaching partners and then the children to see them grow up also. So if I had a child in pre-K, chances are I didn't say goodbye to them. Um, for after two or three years, I got to be right with them all the way through to graduation. Mm. And in some cases, got to coach them at the high school level. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, also, you, you started a, a Saturday morning program, too, as well. Um, but you coached football. You didn't get into officiating football? And Saturday, talk about Saturday morning basketball first and then... Well, when you start up working in the Albany system, they try to give you some other jobs just to keep you involved. And in so many ways, you really don't know what you're getting into. And when I started the Saturday morning basketball program, at the time, the athletic director was uh, Yaffe Lombardo and Frank Owens was working out of Albany High. And they said Saturday morning, nine o'clock, which was fantastic at Arbor Hill, I would show up and kids wouldn't wouldn't, couldn't wait to get inside those doors and start dribbling the basketball. So we did drills and games, and I ended up bringing my two sons along too. They enjoyed watching the kids play. <laughs> yeah. But it was just a great uh, community event for everybody involved. Yeah. The, the, the also, you coached, you, I'm sorry, I keep saying coach, you refereed at the uh, uh, Division II level, Division III level, and JUCO level. Yes. What's the, what's, what's the biggest difference between that and high school, those three levels? Um, it's a lot of commitment. Uh, you're talking usually six hour days, depending mm. where you travel to for the college. And the preparation, it was great, uh, a lot of great friendships. Uh, when I did get out of college, uh, a good friend of mine who does Division I football, Matt Fitzgerald, said I was coming, I was having a hard time with the decision. And I always remember his advice to me. He said, how is this deci decision going to affect the quality of your life? Mm. And I said, you know what, I'm still going to have good friends. I'm still going to be involved with basketball, even though it's at the high school level. And I just thought it was the right. I had a great opportunity, enjoyed doing college, but it's just so time consuming. And we have a lot of great young officials coming up um, at both high school and college ranks. And it's, it's good for the young people, too, as well. <laughs> yeah. So I've got one, class, one last question before I send it to my partner, uh, Coach Fuller. Um, Coach, you started officiating in 1990. So... What really, what, what got you um, 
involved in officiating? What, what, what got your, your interest? Uh, my very first teaching job was at St. Teresa's in 1979, and one of the teachers there was Joe Anastasia, who later coached at Holy Names. In fact, he still teaches at Holy Names. And he said, would you be interested in doing CYO? And I said, oh, I don't know. And, but I didn't know my way around Albany. So I figured this would be a good way, plus it makes the winter go by faster. <laughs> and so I'm doing the CYO girls games, and my wife one year finally said, you know, why don't you go up to high school level? And I said, oh, I don't know. I, uh, <laughs> and that just actually just turned around, and I said, sure, why not? And I was coaching my kids a little bit between 80 and 90 as long as refereeing uh, CYO. So that's, uh, that's really how it came about. And anything that makes the winter go by faster, I'm all for it. <laughs> <laughs> and I forgot to mention that you're from Buffalo. Uh, uh, yes, the yes. The cold weather and Very everything proud. there. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're a Buffalo uh, Bills fan? Yes. My, uh, you'll see my license plate up around the road. It says the NFL. Mm. And so, yeah. I'm, uh, yes, I am a diehard Buffalo Bills fan. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Wait for the jokes later. <laughs> <laughs> Well, obviously, Coach, um, we are our, our um, obviously we're glad to have you on the show. Glad you would come by and talk to us. I was actually a product of the uh, Saturday morning basketball, Arbor Hill Elementary School being my alma mater, and I can attest to it that I enjoy that program. Our peers still talk about that program to this day, mm -hmm. so it was an excellent program. Uh, obviously, we brought you on the show to talk to you a little bit about officiating. We want to uh, we want to give the public a bird's eye view into what goes on into the officiating because a lot of times. They don't have a clue about what's going on. So we want to bring you on and try to divulge in some of those things and try to get them open it up and give them a bird's eye view. Talk about the roles and responsibilities of an official. It's a commitment. And we tell, and I'm always recruiting. And as I said, we have a lot of good young officials coming up. But once you're 18 years old, you can officiate any sport you want. Hmm. And I think a lot of kids, unfortunately, for whatever reason, uh, jobs or other commitments with school, or what have you, cannot uh, make that commitment to a sport team. So if they really enjoy a sport, a great way to make money on the side as well as stay with the sport you so enjoy is to officiate. And a lot of times people, you know, go to a game and they oh no. But mm -hmm. getting out there and blowing the whistle like you know, Torson, is, is good and bad. And <laughs> people like it, the right. other half say, go home. But, uh, <laughs> Uh, it's it's good and they and more and more basketball as both of you know AAU it's pretty much 10 months uh, basketball is being played and people know the game they're getting to know the game better but officiating really gives you that different angle because we have a lot of people that were coaching and have gone to the officiating side and they say what a different side look in yes, uh, it is. Yeah, it's a absolutely. big big difference so talk to me a little bit about, um, like with everything, I know it's fun, you have an excellent time, but talk to me a little bit about the pros and cons that comes with officiating. Well, uh, the cons is, it, I really, um, I, I don't have too many. It really makes you grow up. It makes you become a better people person. It also opens your eyes in so many different ways. It keeps you active throughout the winter and throughout the whole season, actually keeping up on not only the rules, and you make so many. It's a great fraternity of friends and the yes, coaches, absolutely. and you get to meet more and more people. But the, uh, the cons would probably, I would say, is you have to know. We had uh, John Cal, who's probably one of the best officials ever from this area, came come to speak, and we relay the message that he did, and that is you have to realize your family comes first, then your job, and then officiating. If you try to leapfrog that officiating in front of your family or your job, then you're gonna get into a lot of trouble. Uh, and that's, we try to tell them, and they go out and they, some like it, but they usually fall in love with the second year. First year's awful tough. Yeah. Yeah, you, you learn, you <laughs> learn, but uh, they're growing at the same time. And that's, I, I just really enjoy seeing the officials that started and grow with the programs and see them out on the big games. That, nothing makes me happier. Yeah. So um, talk to us a little bit about the mentoring program real um, briefly about what, what they have done now to kind of follow younger officials, like you talked about getting involved. If, yeah, what know. we do is, for anybody interested, they go on our site, uh, I, I -A -A -B -O board 36org and we start classes for officials in September. And we mixed it around once a week and down twice a week. So we found twice a week starting at the end of September. And then we give them a written test of 50 questions the first Monday in November. 
if they pass the test then they can officiate and of course the commitment is there as we tell them we had one person that was there for taking all the classes and he realized his boss wouldn't let him out at three o'clock to get to the games and that is that's kind of tough plus you're being fingerprinted plus you have to invest in your uniform and everything else that comes with it and once you do though we don't leave you hanging and say okay go out and rep the games we give you an opportunity to do scrimmages mm -hmm. and then you also are assigned a mentor so someone you can go watch officiate or you might have those questions that everybody does when they start a new occupation and that really uh, gets them into the second, third year, and so on. Yeah, the competency training is really excellent, I may add. Well, we brought you on the show because we wanted to go over the new rules. A lot of times, um, patrons of the game don't um, understand the new rules oh, yeah. and different things of that sure. nature. So what we want to do is we want to go over the new rules, show some demonstrations, and get at it, and let's go from there. Okay. All right? Love to. So let's go over here and show some demonstrations. Thank <laughs> you.